there is a, a side um, to technology that we're very interested in at, at setup, which is um, a more darker side that has shown its face in the last sure. years. The yeah. documents that Edward Snowden, for example, released. Right. How do you fit that logic yeah. of surveillance and of control yeah. into this picture of the book yeah. that you've written? Yeah. Is, is there a link? Well, actually, that I was going to add it to this book, but I'm doing this other little book where it is better on mm. on territory, you know, etc. And and um, so so what I argue, and this is, I will present a bit of that tonight, um, is um, one sort of framing is, who are we, the citizens? I mean citizens in a broad sense, you know, membership. Mm -hmm. You can be an immigrant. You can, um, when the logic of this surveillance system is that for our security, we first have to be suspect. Because that's how that system works. Everybody is suspect. If you are for two weeks in the United States, you're in that system. And France, Germany, you know, a lot of these nicer countries, mm -hmm. they also have the surveillance. I mean, it's not like it's just the U.S. The U.S. probably has taken it to, you know, we have over a million top security clearance employed. Yeah. Snowden came out of that. We have in the United States 10,000 massive buildings that are full-time gathering data. Surveillance is not quite the word, you know. They're gathering data on everybody that is even two minutes mm -hmm. in the country. And the system is very ironic, so I am suspicious of it. So that you find somebody who has nothing, who is not in this, you don't find them in the system, in this amazing data set, right? right. You find them out, whatever. And then you enter the vast troves of data and look at all the possible connections of that person with other people. That's how it is used. Now, that's a pretty extreme. This is totally imbalanced. And so I argue, if you take a city, crowded space, cafes, and when I go to one of these cafes in, in downtown Manhattan in the village, and I open up, the very long list of networks appears. In other words, the data that they're picking up scrambles everything. I mean, the system, you know, all the connectivity. Okay. So you have... so. Everybody in a whole bunch of cafes would be suspect. We have a problem. It's ineffective. They won't get at the parties. And we citizens are truly downgraded. You know, this is sort of my example. So I argue mm -hmm. in the city, when I'm asked, do you worry? <clears throat> I worry about persecuted people because it starts outside. That is the problem. This kind of system, I mean, I can't. I don't want it. I say to hell with it. Mm -hmm. So I like the notion of very crowded cities because that will scramble up. That will be the undoing. They will lose track or everybody is suspect. I think that's an ironic turn. You know? But um, they might try to expel people but the and use problem the is, you know, this system isn't working. It works for the tech companies that are selling and it continues upgrading. You know, I mean, it's a deal. But it has to start out there. So you are already guided by another logic, not the logic of the brilliant, you know, algorithm builders that are... It starts out there with all the familiar discriminations, and that is, the, that is like the leaden foot that is going to mobilize whatever you're going to find in that system. Leaden foot as in the... Lead and foot in the sense that it will be dragged down by presumptions, assumptions, suspicions that are, you know, they're everywhere out there, you know. And, but the system itself, it, it's kind of a, it's truly an abuse of your average citizen, as is that discrimination out there. But it also, I mean, it, it really, it, it, it cannot quite work, it cannot quite deliver the goods except in very specific situations. I mean, that's sort of my take. But, you know, I am intent on discovering the leaden feet of this system, all this superstructure. For what? When, after all, oh, yeah, the Muslims are suspects, so let's go for that. Mm. When, you know, when the bombing, that famous bombing that happens in uh, somewhere in the interior, Oklahoma, right. that all the calm happened not too long after the, the, some other big bombing that had involved Muslims, in fact, you know, activists, whatever, Al-Qaeda, early, early on. 
And everybody said, ah, that was, they thought that it's again some sort of radical Muslim. Mm. Well, no, it was an American former a veteran, an army veteran. You know, and so the, the prejudices cannot be overcome by this type of system. One wishes that if you have all of the surveillance apparatus and all this taxpayers' money that goes to that rather than feeding the poor or cleaning the toxic dumps, that we had a system that worked and that actually discovered, you know what, the army veterans. Well, now what I'm going to show tonight. <laughs> so we have, thank you to Mr. Snowden, we have all kinds of interesting information. And one bit of information is who are listed as dangerous. This is the United States government. I don't know how the French or the Germans list. And so among them is environmental activists, imagine, the interest for national security. Huh? And, and the other one is veterans. They, they qualified disgruntled veterans. Disgruntled means that you're sort of not happy with what's... It's not even angry, furious, hurt, violated uh, veterans, violating their integrity. No, disgruntled. I mean, this superstructure. And then I have a list of what do we know that NSA knows. This is now in the public domain. Huh? It's not widely used. I don't know why, but everything that I talk about is in the public domain. All right. I, I don't. I would not ever submit anybody to a possibility. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so um, what the NSA knows, what it, and what it can actually, you know, what it can, what we know that it can do. Mm -hmm. So your computer can be off. They can still get at it with radio waves. You know, you don't need an online situation. But the most ridiculous set of items, you know, what it all can do. Like it can access particular whatever's in Canada, Canadian airports. I mean, it's just... Yeah, like if it's possible, let's do it. Exactly. That is exactly the logic. I mean, it really like they lost the plot at a very high price to the average citizen. So for me, that kind of surveillance system really raises the question, what the hell is happening? Yeah. Who are we, the citizens? Like the we are really losing rights. If you then add to that the new trade agreements, what they call partnerships, because they want to get out of the WTO, which finally has mobilized, you know, Global South actors in demand, so it's still stuck in the door around of years ago. So now we call them partnerships to create a new regime, which basically gives corporations private justice. They argue that if there is a dispute, the lawyers of the corporations will be the judges. So in other words, again, we lose rights. And with these beautiful bells... Yes. That's uh, incredible. Um, thank you so much for this interview and for your time. Yes. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, My pleasure. I look forward to the lecture tonight. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>